And what is this generation? What is this monstrosity, actually? What? I actually like it. I'd like to buy five of these, please. I actually like these kind of weird choke points of high grounds you can ambush people from. Might actually give some usage over to more range composite. Probably only for bombards, but in an ideal world, longbows could be used. Nah, it's not going to happen. We could see some longbow spammers early on, though, because BC and Kyo, well, they both got the English, and BC, oh, ho, 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 BC's got company. Orc and him are now neighbors. And you could have pressed an Abasa player. You might need to in this situation because he is kind of blocking you a little bit from extending the south. You could go north and you have got gold. Double gold vein, in fact. Orc kind of made a mistake here. He hasn't got any gold. Oh. Wow. I think he was originally intending to go there and then he reacted like this. Which is weird because... What? He had a good spawn. This is a really good spawn here. He's got double gold back here. Loads of berries. As an ambassador player, that's great. So much wood in reserve. Like, he could have actually built here and controlled the choke point and had a whole corner of the map to himself with only one small breach point on the, on the south side and the rest just being forward. But instead, Orc smash. So Orc smash or get smashed, I guess? Those are the two options. As he goes very aggressive with his placement instead. Sorry, I just had to figure out what I'm going to eat. Because this one could go long. Mm. Who's going to eat who first in this game? Kazva, starting next to Adni. Oh, boy. Well, Adni has a tendency to oppress players that he starts right next to. But I'm not sure that this is the opponent to do it to. In fact, I could easily see this go the other way. As Kazva is playing as the Roos up against an Abbasid here. This is going to be a bit tough for you to try and box in and block your opponent off. Let's we'll see if that plays out well for him in the coming minutes. Because another issue when he plays the Abbas is you don't have much flexibility on your landmarks. You only have one shot at getting it right. If you drop your House of Wisdom straight away, you risk being dropped from the game straight away. And that's another thing, actually. I was kind of expecting Orc to play his House of Wisdom on the east side of the map. Because then you actually have the ability to leverage two bases. Now you're just stuck with one. And in this one situation, like at least you are denying BC away from the gold. The bad news for you, my friend, is he has a reserve gold. We're going to speed this up a little bit because this is the hyper early game. And we came into this one a few minutes late. But this is live. If anyone who now is coming in going, is this going on right now? It is indeed. They all got together. They clearly wanted to warm up. They're like, oh, well, we're done with uh, Road to Wall for the weekend. So it's time to get ready for the Outback Octagon. As in this one, I believe we have four players that are playing in the Outback Octagon. Might be five. I can't remember if really unskilled made it in. I don't think he did. I think it was Crackity who made it. I don't know why I always get those two mixed up. Early game. Like, we see these Mount TCs, they're actually in range of each other. The Pepper and going back and forth. <laughs> what is this house placement? What is this house placement? He desperately needed a house, huh? Oh, God. That's brilliant. He's getting fish as well. A few different players actually getting on the fish. So this is going to turn into a little bit of a bloodbath quite quickly, I think. Meanwhile, Outpost needs to go up, and then gold's going to be secured for Beastie. Notice he's very delayed on going to gold. He's just trying to sort his economy elsewhere first. So she better get away with it. What? <laughs> Where is Orc going? He's actually going for the House of Wisdom elsewhere, right? No. It's just for the gold vein. So he's really far out in No Man's Land, and now Beastie knows it. So that could be very dangerous for him. Meanwhile, Marine Lord making his way up into Feudal. He's got that central spawn. He's at the crossroads of kingdoms, really. It's kind of interesting to see how he's going to play this. The kingdoms aren't too close, so I don't expect him to be harassed. Like, Kyo doesn't even need to go for Marine Lord's land. It's actually quite interesting. This could have been the crossroad of kingdoms if Orc had gone for the east side. But instead, now, I feel like Marine Lord has all the freedom to do that. Like, he can extend full east. Not only does he have loads of reserve resources, this is the single best location for a wonder in the game. There is nowhere else in the map that compares to this. You have strong natural defenses on the north side. And only small choke points on the south, as well as high ground advantage just spamming outposts up here. And then you just have to guard the center. Like, this is as good as it gets. Nobody else has a spawn this good for Wonder later on. I continue to speed on through to catch up on the timer. Now go 
going up. A little bit delayed from Beastie. He's starting to establish a little bit of control here. Needs to be careful because we see the Orc is already ahead of him on the outpost spam, so he's eliminating some options here. But Orc might have other problems. Le Grand Mughal is sitting to the south side. Le Grand Mughal, who clearly wanted to be the French in this one, won't be able to, uh, is quite talented. Not a top 100 contender, but 635th on the ranked leaderboards right now, so fairly competent. At the game. And then, of course, everyone else in this, we already talked about, like, they are top 100 or top 200. Really unskilled has fallen down a little bit to 173rd in the world, but everyone else in this is top 100 easily. Uh, well, Adney, sorry. I forgot about Adney. Adney, he was 363rd, I believe it is, in the world. But you see, like, overall, this is quite a, a, a competent and talented game. Uh, compared to the last one, where I think we had, for example, Pippin, who's unranked and, you know, isn't pro level. Like, they were maybe an outlier, and Lydical, of course, was uh, a lot lower than our lowest bound person in this one. So this one has stepped up by a reasonable margin. Now, Orc, hard on the stone. Should be him going to the multi-TC build. Needs to sort his wood first. He's getting into the archers. Interesting choice here. Doesn't just want to try and castle up. He actually wants to try and contain Beastie now. Beastie, of course, the biggest threat. And Orc realizes it because, remember, Orc was in that last game that we just watched with Beastie in. So he's all too aware of the threat that this man presents. Meanwhile, Adni. Looks like he has started to extend down. <laughs> and there it is. That's what I was expecting, actually, out of more of these Abbasid players. I'm kind of surprised that we didn't see it out of Orc. And I'm shocked that we aren't seeing it more in general. Like, some Abbasid players just strong arm a corner and they believe in it like we've seen that actually in the competitive lobbies where like for example lucifron he just guards his entire corner other players choose to diversify they'll risk sticking the house of wisdom elsewhere so that they can't just be landmark sniped asap because i think that is one big weakness for the abbasids it's one of the easiest sieves to take out at the start of the game as they don't really have great defensive tools in these mega randoms especially considering the way that the sieves tend to build they tend to boom up i feel like the abbasids like once they get set up they're really fast but their initial setup cost in multiple TCs and whatnot feels a little bit slower than other sieves. Relic's being yoinked now. What? Marine Lord has five. He's about to bank five. And he could still get more. Marine Lord is one of only two players up. And the other one that is in Castle Age is an HRE player. Your boy be greedy, but he gets away with it. That's six, six relics. Dude, this is the, like, this is a signature Marino move. Like, he's earned that title now with this play on the deli. He's so damn good at it. And you're seeing exactly that. He's like, wait, oh, there's no more room in this in. Whoops, I'll need to build another mosque. Good thing I've already got one. <laughs> Made that two spares. Oh, wow. When was the last time you saw someone with six relics in a mega random? He could get more as well. There's still two relics up for grabs in this area. He'll have to play around contested territory then. This is the advantage of playing center, is usually a lot of the relics tend to spawn more kind of centrally gravitated. Like there'll be a few on the outside, but you'll find a lot in the center. Same with all the other resources. So Marine Lord utilizes as well. And also due to the layout, because no one else took the behind side, he can start building back. You can see he's already done that with the compound defender. Wouldn't be surprised if his Imperial Age landmark is all the way in the corner. Definitely would advise it. Best way to play this and sets you up for Wando later on. Lombo's trying to counter out the archers. Are going to be paying the arts. Beastie with the slow reaction to the ramp now coming into play. As it looks like Beastie was trying to be greedy. Yeah, I think he was maybe considering teching up. Set up the farms. Gold was more or less there. It's not going to be for free anymore. Push across. Lombo's at least sniping out one or two archers here or there. But the villagers have to pull away. They're going to be pulling away a little bit too late. The ram here. Looks like the outpost will be going down. So we'll just keep chasing him away, but needs to make sure he guards this ram. Don't want to leave it susceptible to torch fire from the villagers. Beastie having an incredibly hard game here, as it seems that Le Grand Mogul has not got involved at all. You know, or Le Grand Mogul. But he might be a mogul in this game, because he's playing Big Pimp, and he just wants all the gold, he wants all the glory. He's slowing the tech up, but like he's not taking a fight at all, so he should be well postured to easily make his way up in this game. More rounds being built. Oh, yeah, he wants the big threat gone right away. He's like, Beastie, you get too many freebies. 
You get too many free corners where no one can test you. Well, not, not today. Today I'm here to play. And it's going to be pretty, pretty ugly for you. He says he goes in, snipes down several villages. The Lombo count is starting to increase, but the Rams are already under the Council Hall, and that will deny you your ability to build your army up further. An army that is still outnumbered at this point. Double Ram should be good enough this rate. He needs to construct that final Ram and start targeting out the Lombos. Right now, not willing to dive in. Might be a mistake for Mork. But he can always push more troops, and they are on their way. That's just the first way. The second one's yet to join in. And folks, after you get through this council hall, you can just instantly set fire to these, these farms pretty easily. Like, these rams do 200 damage, the farms only have 300 health. So you're quickly going to lose your one lifeline as Beastie. Beastie's pretty much done. He can't hold. And this villager pull, oh no, no! That is not going to end well. That is everything, 27. Here, that might be forced to fight half of the being villagers. Overall, Beastie is looking like anything but that. He's looking like a little puppy right now. Quite hard to stabilize, at least. Looks like he might survive for the moment. My concern is, if I am Orc, do I not just ram you? I think I just ram you. Why slow down here? There's no reason to. Meanwhile, let's quickly check on Marine Lord. The dude got seven relics. Seven relics. He's in a mega run of free-for-all with several other players, and he got seven. What the hell? I can barely get three in my 1v1s. And now the Rams in on the primary TC. Why tack out the strong defense when you can just take out the way of producing villages? Oh, beastie. Well, he really has kind of consigned himself to the tomb here with this play. Didn't really have much of a choice in it. Villager pool. Oh, no. <laughs> he goes to the garrison. Rams can just renew what they were doing, though. And you're going to have to sacrifice. Like, you're going to lose maybe 10 villages to stop this. The Maganel, though. The Maganel for Beastie. He's on fire. He needs to protect it now. Baits him in. Orc with a sidestep. Staggered formation. Gets him away from the heavy hit. And now the villager's being peppered down. And look at the way he targets him. Ram. Making sure that TC is close to crumble and repair crew trying to keep it alive. It looks like Orc is going to be pushed back. But Beastie far from out of the woods yet. By the way, can we just talk about Kyo here? This greedy son of a gu... What is the size of this kingdom carve? Oh my god. He's having the freest game of his life. The remarkable part, by the way, is that Marine Lord, despite being in a position where he could have been contested by multiple players, he found a way to go ultra greedy and make his way up into Imperial already. And his eco is looking phenomenal. Like, the count is up to 80. The gold income, he's got over a thousand gold per minute, and he only has one person working on gold. One person! And also, because he unlocked this quickly, I'm pretty sure he already got Tide Barns. Yeah. Yeah, he maxed the scholars for the research, so he got Tide Barns already. He has 12? Just, he's researching everything. Marine Lord might play for a very quick type of wonder in this game. This is so vile the way he's done this. The way he's got away with this as well. Wow. Really unskilled. What is putting him up in the score? Well, he is imperiled. Wait, no, he's not even imperiled. Yeah, that is a good question. I think it's because he's been fighting. Yep, there it is. That's why. The reason he's so high in score, folks. It's because he's killing Kazva. We didn't even really check in on Kazva. It's been so long. He at least backed away from this fully with the high trade house on the right side. But someone who went out was Adni. Adni got obliterated very early on here. There was nothing he could do to sustain. He was the first player out. And Kazva now being pressured is really unskilled. Is marching nonstop. 80 mana arms on their way for your landmarks. Oh, I hope you're tucked in tight here. Because the bed bugs are sure to bite. Crossbows, they... What the hell? What? 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 It's too late now. Uh, Kaz, Kazva, Kazva, yeah, get the keep, get the keep fast. Kazva, more than that, you need Imperial, you need Imperial right now. I'm pretty sure they can just torch this down. They can just take out the high trade house. Instead, they're going to take out your army first. They chase through. Torch it. If he just torches it, he's dead. I don't see how 80 mana arms wouldn't get through this. Repair crew to try and offset any damage being done. That's going to cost you a lot of villages to keep to go up. 
to try and stabilize here. But if I am really unskilled, which I am, <laughs> I'm just doing this straight away. Torch is out. And Truda really unskilled. It took him a while to realize, but finally he sees it. Kaiser's dead. There's no way he can repair this quick enough. That is too many MAAs. Bye-bye. Kazva down. Beastie still down, but not out, though. Holding on here somehow by some goddamn miracle. Big Reznor fan. Never give up. Never surrender. As his troops keep yelling, Ura, trying to get out of here. It's going to take a while, though. Trebs are starting to build up. There's a problem. Just going to fast forward this a little bit. We're not seeing the aggression just yet. And it will allow us to catch up to full, like, accurate, true life timing as we're approaching that now. Meanwhile, oh, really good skills going in. Marine Lord. Okay, this is the fight you can't take. No, 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 dog. This, this was a bridge too far. A bridge too far. Stop. <laughs> but Beastie's gone. He taps out. Sayonara, Beastie. Oh, and what a perfect timing, just as he raids me as well. Mwah, much love, my boy. <laughs> a little bit too much love coming from Orc, though. Oh, I, I said Orcs, they always want to fight. He definitely got that. We don't, Beastie, he likes his hyper late game. <laughs> hyper dead early game, though. No way to get out of this. Oh, man. You know, they say nobody puts baby in the corner, but he got put in the corner of his own design, really. And he's probably crying like a baby at the end of this. That was not fun. That was so oppressive. And Orc. Orc smashed for a while, but now Orc might get smashed in because Le Grand Moogle, oh my, is he building up fast. Probably chanting, murder, murder. Because now you can just start raiding in. Like, Orc slowed him down, self down so much, right? To do this. So it's going to hurt him. Meanwhile, Northside, Kyo. Still has yet to discover other life in the world. He really is living the Attack on Titan story. Like, small spoiler alert, the people inside the wall didn't realize there's people outside the wall. And I'm wondering if he's ever going to discover them. Elephants, though. Marine Lord. No, no, you don't get to complain, Red Unskilled. This, this was your choice. You activated the beast. Elephant Lord is here to play. Ooh, <laughs> the man at arms. Oh, they found one elephant. Yeah, what about the rest? Dog, if I'm Marine Lord, I just end you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I am Marine Lord. I'm nowhere near that skill level, but even I know how this works. Loud elephant noises intensifies. <laughs> this crossbow upgrades it, it, This is like so crafty by Marine Lord. Everyone's like looking at Kyo like, damn, this guy's in like the best location possible. Yeah, but Marine Lord has like done the unthinkable with Delhi. He's rushed Imperial Age and it's not hurt him because <laughs> he, he had so much research power. Like there's nothing left. There's crap research left to get through. Like practically anything worthwhile has already been taken. And I think he set up Rax as well. Like, yeah, he's going for the upgrades. He's almost there on the Elite Horseman. Screw Elite Lancers. Who needs those? Like, overall, he's in cozy steading here. And with 16 elephants, it's Zoo Tycoon time, baby. Really unskilled is, like, just trying to do the maths in his head. Like, if I get a million Langsneck, maybe. Yeah, but get Spears as well. Spears with the extra armor and Lang's deck. At least that way it's cheaper on you. Because this is quite the burden. It's Elephanto fun time. Oh, no, no, no. The Lang's deck. They can't even get close enough. <laughs> They're so dead. <laughs> nice army that you had. Nareno is taking his time with this. But it's just so easy. <laughs> He's like, there's no, there's no resistance anymore. This is like me trying to fight Mike Tyson without using a Trank Gun. Funnily enough, you would need a Trank Gun to take these things down with quite a lot of darts. So that might be bye-bye to him. Palace of Swabi is stabilizing him for now because it looks like that's not known. So really unskilled. He might become the rat underneath the floorboards here. 
Because Marine Lord might not think to look here, especially if he discovers a certain Mongol scum nearby. There's La Grand Moogle still sitting over here, parked in an eternal conflict with Orc. Orc, who, if you are late to the party, was able to rip Beastie's head off and wear it as a trophy. Decapitated Beastie and then walked around going, Now the Orc army needs to find more war. It is the way. The war is just a little bit hard on him because that's a lot of lances building up. And that is quite the prophetic defense force from Orc. I hope he called for a peace time of at least five minutes because he's going to need it. In fact, five minutes might be perfect because in five minutes, Mogul might be dead because it's coming. The elephant tsunami is on its way. Slow chase through. <laughs> He's like, where are you going? Where are you going? Dude, this is like one of the most depressing pursuits that you could ever watch. Like <laughs> 0 0.75 versus 0 0.88. Honestly, I feel like I needed two times it just for it to look real. <laughs> Hot pursuit underway right here. Oh, God. Meanwhile, Senna. Now, Marine Lord, we've seen him play for Sacred Sight victories before in competitive Mega Random Nomad. And, well, it was a thing. Didn't work out too well. But this might be the game. Where's the third Sacred Sight? Wait, is there any two? I'm squinting right now trying to find it. I genuinely can't see a third. Is this a two spawner? No way. No way. That would be insane. I I think it might be. This three, I, I'm just blind, aren't I? Has he already got the third? Is it back here? Chat, how grandpa was... Ah, there we go. Grandpa found his glasses. Okay, but he has access as well because he's pushing that way. I think Marine Lord is going for it, yeah. Meanwhile, the Grand Moogle, I, I'm starting to think there was some communication of please don't kill me going on there. Because they don't seem to be hurting each other. Brilliant skill, of course, crumbled out of this. So it's down to four. Now, Kyo, does he have the resources? <sighs> Boy, he needs to get big on his wood and then he's good to go. So now with Brilliant skill gone, yeah, there it is. Marino's going for the Sacred Sight victory. And he could be really crafty about this, actually. If he waits for a wonder tick down and a force fight on Kyo, he could set himself up for the sacred sites. And it could be really crafty because, like, the cool thing about doing it here is if all attention draws towards Kyo and Kyo gets eliminated, all aggression comes from the west. So you can just hold on this front. That being said, the alternative is you just murder everyone. <sighs> okay, yeah, that's the play by play. I mean, let's be logical about this. You could kill the two players in the west. But then you would likely be handing a victory to Kyo because you'd have to dive into English network of castles being peppered by arrows and cannons. And also you'd be 1v1. In a situation where Kyo hasn't known war. All right, He grew up in a peaceful village. never came to his country. So he hasn't actually wasted any resources on futile conflicts. Like he's just been building a reserve, right? Here you go, Marine Lord. He is going for it. All three sacred sites under his control. Mark it on your calendar, folks. 33 minutes and 15 seconds. 10 minutes to go. Kyo just about knows where the sacred sites are because they were captured. You can see he hasn't even checked the whole map. You can see that the walls are up, though. Remember, 10 minutes for a sacred site victory. Wonders will cost you 15. Kyo, he might learn the hard way that it's a very scary outside world. He cannot stay in his base indefinitely. And folks, we've seen Marine Lord try this before. Admittedly, the last time he tried it was in a game where basically everyone was still alive. Which means his plan was very dead. This time around, it's just free. And two of them are not looking that strong right now. It's all on Kyo to now start pushing out. 
And these choke points could be the bane of his existence. If only he knew. If only, wait, does Kiwa actually know? Okay, he knows about this spread. Build a, build a gate, go through. You can just decap. You can burn everything down there. Rush with Horseman. He's rushing everywhere but the right place. Kiwa, come on, man. No. No, come on. Like, this is the wrong area, sir. Go west, west. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Mongols are here to play though. Marine Lord. What did we say it was? Was it 31 minutes 15? Was it 33 minutes 15? It hasn't been 33 minutes already. I forgot the own timer I gave. This is why it'd be really, really helpful to have a sacred timer. It's 33.15, I'm pretty sure. There we go. Shout out to chat for helping me out on that one. Numbers are hard, okay? If I was good at numbers, I'd be an accountant cooking my books. Probably shouldn't have said that on a recorded site. Grand Moogle. Should have decent reserves to push in here, though. Yeah, gold's a little bit lackluster. <gasps> oh, what happened here? Uh, he hasn't even Moogle. Oh, he's too busy going for the decap. And Marine Lord isn't stopping it. He's out of position entirely. What? That's very surprising. Oh, we can speed this up a little bit to get to real time, can't we? Because that's a decap. Wait, wait. Moogle, Moogle, no. Moogle, no. Mo okay, he's got more troops. My hair, El Full Alto, if he hadn't done that. Wow. That was, like, I've, I've seen that. I, I've literally seen top eight players forget to decap a sacred site and lose a few seconds later. Wouldn't have been a few seconds of the situation, but it's easy to forget when you think you've done it already. So decap comes through. Wing condition removed. Kyo, do you go for it? It does sound like quite the spicy meatball, doesn't it? Victory by wonder. He's definitely building up the reserves. Just fast forwarding us a little bit to get to real time because we're a minute away from true real time. I don't think that's a spoiler. There's no way this game ends in a minute. I'd be impressed if this game ended in a minute. <laughs> All I had to do was DDoS my opponents. <laughs> the only way I'll ever win a tournament. So, more sacrifice to be decapped. Interesting choice by Grand Moogle to continue through. I think they're misreading this. Like, Marine Lord looks like he's the biggest threat. But, like, now look at the scores. It's very obviously Kyo. Kyo needs to be addressed soon. And oh my god, oh my god, the horsemen, the horsemen, there's so many of them! Uh, but what do you do when your opponent starts pushing more relevance? Oh my god. That is actually so crafty by Marine Lord. Nobody does that. Nobody pushes more elephants. So if you actually do like the tests, uh, horsemen tend to be the best counter to tower elephants if you need like a force that directly engages outside like Maganels if someone stands still. Because otherwise, like Spearmen, they just get ran away from. Horsemen can gap close and then trap you. They're really good. Where they suck is against War Elephants, because War Elephants, as you can see, get a ridiculous amount of bonus damage. 23 by base on the spear, and then 40 on top of that. And then on top of that, you've got the Elephants attacking. Why is this a big deal? Because Elephants, these Elephants at least, are heavy melee cavalry. These boys, they only do bonus damage up against range units. And the armor difference as well means you're doing next to no damage. Half your damage is just gone before you strike. It, it's so awkward here. And this choice by Marine Lord means he should actually make deep strides into Kyo's base. The key here is going to be that the other two don't join in against him. Right now, it looks like Grand Mogul is not being biased towards a Frenchman or a Vietnamese. Instead, he's mixing up his aggression, which I like to see. However, he and Orc are going to have to find a way to work together to take out whoever is left on the east side here. Because the east side is definitely looking dominant right now. One way or the other. Unless they rip each other's eyes out. Which they do seem to be in the process of. Now, elephants in. I love how clumsy elephants sound when they're going for the rams. So starting to breach. 
More reinforcements coming. Horseman as well. As he does see the hand cannoneers in the field. Hand cannoneers that should not be this close to the action, folks. They just die. And the bombards will die alongside him. Especially if you don't wheel them back. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Elephant hungry. No, Ellie. No, Dumbo. You can't eat wooden metal. We'll find a way. Goes right past the production line. That's a little bit of an ambush. That's maybe a bridge too far. Only two worldlands here. Let's see how well they do, though. Have to remember they're striking for over 60 per hit onto these horsemen. So the horsemen do not last very long. Now, man arms, maybe the better solution coming out. At least you aren't giving bonus damage to the war elephants. But in the meantime, the second wave coming and the third wave as well. Oh, God. Someone re wall the elephant exhibit. Stop laying them out of the enclosures. It's never ending. You know what is ending though? Moogle's aggression. He's just gone AFK. Probably just typed in the chat. Toilet break. Be back soon. I don't know how Kyo keeps this up. He, well, he stopped pushing Horseman. Uh, one piece of advice from Marine Lord might be to finish off what you're passing though. Because although he's not pushing Horseman right now, there we go. I was about to say, even though he's not pushing Horseman right now, doesn't mean he won't push Horseman in three minutes if you go deeper and you'll lose your troop. You've also been rewalled, so that needs to be fixed. And it looks like with that gain ground, Marine Lord is going to bring in the Siege Battalion. Yeah, you see, these elephants, they tend to just kind of need um, medical attention through all the blood on their face, usually the counseling kind. These elephants, on the other hand, tend to need medical attention through fractured skulls as they ram buildings with their face. Very organized at war. Uh, oh no! 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 Kyo, you should know! You've literally been in this area already! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, a secret path! And how did you discover this path, Marine Lord? Please tell me advanced tactics. Number one player in the, the world. Best player in the game. I need to know, how did you find this, this masterful route? It's such a next level strategy. How did you do it? I clicked in his base. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, pa like auto pathing is such BS. <laughs> he never would have found this otherwise. Oh my goodness. Oh, the infrastructure is starting to flop. The TCs are going down. Folks, I think Kyo might be going out and fought for this raid. I'm very much struggling to see how he recovers this. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> and the horsemen try to block the network of Citadel's aura from extending. I wish these two would... Oh, oh, they are doing so. Okay. We were so distracted, we didn't notice. Orc smash. Orc smash a lot, actually. He broke all the line. All the outposts are gone. I think Mogul was out of position. And that's also, by the way, why he was AFK with the siege. He's only now moving them. It's going to take quite a while, though. Cannon is still trying to target out these elephants, but give respect where respect is due. These elephants, like, yes, you can say hand cannons are decent, but they get in range. And these elephants have more health due to biology. So the trade out isn't as great as you'd think for hand cannon is. Not when there's this quantity of tower elephants. It's arguably better to go for bombards because they can always stay out of range. At the moment, frontline holding, but I have my doubts about this. Kyo has a lot of reserve resources. His issue at this rate is going to be keeping up the push out troops. Like, achieving and maintaining pop cap is becoming a problem for him because he just doesn't have the buildings, right? Especially if you go for hand cannoneers, because another thing that people tend to forget with hand cannoneers, compared to bombards, they're a unit that's more exposed so they can actually get sniped out. And then their reproduction time is very long, right? So, like, if we look at the comparative, a bombard, if we build it here, 33 seconds. Bad. Reasonable. If I want to build a hand cannon here, which, by the way, he's building from all the bloody way back here. 26 seconds. Now, yes, bombards cost more, but as we already highlighted, Kyo's issue isn't money. He's not running out of resources, okay? This guy's making it rain in the club right now. His issue is going to be maintaining a defensive line. And if the elephant count continues like this, 
these hand cannonades just go bye bye. Especially when they run out like this. You can't even run away now. Uh oh. Uh oh. Playtime. Marine Lord wants his Omnom. And he's straight in. And can is even garrisoning to try and stay alive. Kyo, like, it's never ending. If Marine Lord builds forward infrastructure, which he might do soon, uh, you can't match his production rate. Like, he's always pop cap, but you're not. An individual, like, if you talk about, like, pop cap value, how long each of these units last, how long an elephant were free pop cap loss versus free hand cannon is, it's not even close. It's actually, like, trivial how big the difference is. Also, something that people tend to forget is, like, these crossbows, you can see, like, both of them do 50 damage. So 30 damage per shot. How much damage does a hand cannon do? 42. But then look at the health pool difference. Like, the effective DPS of these two armies isn't really that comparative, especially when this happens. When you move out of range of the network of castles, you're screwed. And he's about to lose the army again. He has to back away. Meanwhile, west side, how are we looking with the fight? Oh my, oh my. It looks like Mogul is stunned, or Mughal rather, I keep on Mogul. He's definitely not looking like a Mogul. Don't look like he knows how to make the money splash here. As Orc is the one making a big splash in the Mongol base. The Mongol Mughal in a lot of trouble here. Step read out, just trying to dodge death, moving towards Marine Lord territory. Uh oh. Is that his last landmark? Oh my. Okay, he's got he's got the white stupa. The white stupa hasn't been seen yet. So he still lives for the moment. The boy has not yet come to die, but might be dying soon. And oh, this is the worst feeling what he's done here. He's gone into the spearman. I understand why, but it still feels tough. He doesn't have a choice because the war elephants, like this is the thing, if it was just tower elephants, 100% you go horsemen. He has to go spearman due to the war elephants. But this could backfire, especially with the way that he's immobile because he's still very exposed. If he'd done this with choke points, it's good. But notice what Marine Lord is starting to do. He's scouting in, he's going deep, he's getting a layer of the base and he'll probably continue to do this from here on out, pushing horsemen in and raiding the eco. Now, he doesn't know that it won't do a great deal of good right away, but it will slowly chip away at the beast. Meanwhile, Orc, the other front line that is moving, this one in favor of the red, as all the defenses are starting to crumble for Moogle. <laughs> this bombard. Well, I think he wants to just live here. He doesn't want to fight. So I don't think he's going to engage in battle because he might get more than he bargained for. Green Lord at the moment has at least been pushed back to the close. But don't be deceived about the flow of this territory. Like, look what was lost. Look at, like, does someone want to do the counting? I can't be asked. Counting is hard. Like, okay, I'm actually doing the count in my head right now, like, subconsciously. That is 27 stables, I think. 27 stables. It costs 150 wood each. That is a phenomenal amount of wood gone, but also a phenomenal amount of production gone. And that would have been re remarkable backstab production, actually, when all these elephants reached by. But it just didn't work out because he didn't have the hand cannoneers already. If he had the hand cannoneers at this quantity and he was pushing the horsemen, great cannon fodder, great distraction, great damage out on the tower elephants, and it buys enough time for your hand cannoneers. But now, now you don't have that flank attack. Now it's just all looking for from Reload as you'll look to gain more ground. And he most definitely will out this. Push back for the moment. Tower elephants are going to be a little bit exposed here. Whoopsie daisy, Angel. One flops over, but the man goes now. Well, that was unexpected. Now Keo's in trouble. He needs to target them out. He needs to get rid of the man now, but he can't even see it. He finally gets the click off with the, uh, with the wraparound. Horseman getting on top of him. Elephants getting through the front line. Staggered formation needs to back away from this but does not have great retreat speed here. Now with the more horsemen coming through from Marine Lord, that's going to wipe the hand cannon is. And he's back to zero, really. Marine Lord taking a dent to his pop cap as well. Kyo will be able to instant replace, but what is he replacing with? It looks like he did charge up the hand cannon here line. So we'll be able to survive. The more likely fight to end soon is over here as Orc continue to smash. The white stupa was found and burnt to cinders. Only one. Lifeline remains. A step breed out that is half built. Everything else is down. You can see the deer stone here. The primary TC. It's a pile of rubble. He's trying to rebuild it though. Two villages snuck in the back. So Moogle might rat race his way back into this one. Oh, 
the Marine Lord. Is he running out of resources? The only concern with this. I think he's backing off for this very reason. Like the resources are going below 10k. If you look at Kyo, he's never draining. This is the problem because these elephants are individually pricey at 1,000 resources compared to hand cannons at 240 each. In fairness, the effective HP means that like they can trade reasonably well. But the difference is going to be these Maganels, and that's why he backs off. Like this is a really good switch up from Marine Lord. I've seen plenty of players that just stubbornly keep headbutting the wall, right? They just keep pushing elephants and elephants and more elephants. Did I mention elephants, by the way? It never stops. But he's smart about this. He goes, actually, like, Maganels. Maganels beat the hand cannoneers. I get 50% bonus damage against them. They disappear to this. And once the hand cannoneers are gone, because of those previously mentioned production rates on the hand cannoneers, it takes a lot longer to replace them compared to Lombos or Spearmen. I know some people, like, so some interesting questions coming through about, like, how the English get beaten out in the late game, like, with unlimited resources. You have to remember that the Delhi aren't too bad off in this situation because of the gold intake. Like, if we look at Kyo's gold intake, he's getting 1.7k. Marine Lord, for comparison, is getting 1.3 to 1.4k. And he only has 10 people on gold. A lot of this is from passive income. So, if you're wondering how the Delhi can keep up, it's kind of due to the way Marine, uh, Marine Lord played this. He has got his hands on seven relics. That's what's bolstering his economy right now. That's what's keeping him alive. That's, that is the highest count I've ever seen in a Mega Random Free For All. Nobody else has even come close to that. And there's a lesson to be taken away from this in terms of playing Central Resource. Like, starting Central Resource usually gives you more relics. And he played it well. In fact, if I am Marine Lord, now that they got rid of someone else, as Moogle finally got hunted out and taken out, he's gone. So now it's a freeway. And in a free way, Marine Lord could take control of all three sacred sites and go for the, the countdown. He could also build a wonder, which is what he's doing! Great Palace of Agra in the back corner. He's had enough of this crap. If it's going to be a quagmire, if it's going to be a bogged down fight with no true gains, then let that be on the defensive, Marine Lord. Hello, sunshine. My, oh my. So he'll get in defensive position. And we talked about, we actually, the funny part is we alluded to this at the beginning. We, we talked about it. We said that this was a possibility, that this was the single best spot on the map for a wonder. Nowhere else matched this. Because you've got the natural defense to the north side that nothing can be done about. South side is tight breach points, which have already been walled off by here by Marine Lord. So you have to come through the center. Good luck. Because even elephants can react oh, yeah, quick enough right. north-south. And I can guarantee there's going to be at least two layers of walls. And the other thing that Marino did do we expected was he built the final landmark back here. So you can't even landmark snipe him. Despite the fact he built a central base, he was always layering this way. TC dropped, then Dome of Faith, then a little bit further back compound defender, and then a big jump all the way back for the Palace of the Sultan. There it is. Wonder complete. And this, this is uncomfortable. This was not what you were playing towards. Two versus one for a wonder victory. M Lord, 15 minutes away from claiming the dub. <laughs> the wolves. Oh, these greedy deforesters. We'll see if that comes into the picture later. It's going to be hard for them to notice, though, because when you're rushing through, you're looking towards the, the wonder. And if, even if you look at the landmark, you're just going to see walls here. So if you think about this from a vision perspective, we can see with God Vision that there's a whoopsie daisy here. I don't think Kyo or Orc are going to spot that whoopsie daisy because they're going to be playing this side. They're going to be playing north side of the wall. Yeah, you talk about garrisoning scholars. I don't think we have a reason to game. I'm pretty sure everything possible in the world is researched by Delhi. Let's compare that to other civs here. Well, Knights haven't been set up for Kyo if he needs to switch into that. We won't care about game at this stage. He did get all the other researchers, so yeah, th he's pretty good off. He hasn't prepped for a situation where he might need Lombos or Crossbows, though, which could be a bit dangerous, but he has got the hand cannon here, so who cares? Meanwhile, in the Legion of Doom, Orc looking pretty spicy here. Isn't going to go for a switch up into composite bows and archers because they take too long to get on the front. 
It's just going to be a lot of rapido camel arches, and then I think the idea is use the spearmen primarily as a build force for siege weapons. I would love to see some forward siege workshops though, because he is going to need bombards. I don't think you can do much here without bombards. And yeah, there it is. So we'll have the ability to get into them. But both of them need to coordinate. I think if they go in one after the other, this could really bite them in the ass. Because I think Marine Lord has the capacity to respond one after the other. Even with his limited resources, is good enough. And remember, like, Wood isn't going to drop. He's got so much in reserve back here. Gold as well. We already highlighted that there's a, a risk with these relics. One thing I would like to see Marine Lord do is one by one, pull out these relics and pull them back to reserve Skull, uh, reserve Moss back here. I think that's actually a really high level play here. You lose, I think across the process of moving them all, you maybe lose like 300 gold, maybe 400, but it's worth it because right now it's the first thing that's going to be taken out by, Mo uh, by Orc. And you can't really afford to defend against Orc at this point. You have to wait until he's at the choke point. Team Orc here. Trying to get as many of the hand cannoneers online as possible. Now the switch up and trebuchets. He knows he needs to take his time, be calculated, just gain, gain, gain. It doesn't matter if it's slow on the gains. Progressive gains is what matters here. Don't do what Marine Lord done. Don't take a big chunk and then immediately fall back. You can't afford to. Because the wonder victory is just 12 minutes away. These cannon emplacements doing a hell of a lot of damage here. With all the upgrades. I mean, this, this is actually costing a lot of spearmen. Sir, bombards would, bombards would do everything. There we go. They're finally on the way, but heavily delayed. And you can't afford to be delayed here. You can see he's trying to wrap around now. Trying to look for a way in. Marine Lord defended by a dead player's four or five pass walls, as you do. Good old Caswell, always looking to help out. Actually, can I... <laughs> I hope they notice this, this wall that's been blitzed through. Otherwise, Caswell still help. Oh, God. <laughs> So Orc, he doesn't know. He hasn't got the vision. He like he's oh, he can't quite glimpse it. That's actually a big deal. So he's gonna try to pepper his way for a full wall instead of breaching through the soft underbelly. That's a problem. That's another delay. Another delay you can't afford. It looks like he's now starting to move down. So he'll finally realize the breach of the wall. But what he doesn't know that we know is this. This is possible. You can make your way up through here, and there's a wall here to take down. I don't think Orc knows this, and I don't think he's going to look for it. We can check now, actually. He hasn't looked here. Or, or, Moogle, or, yeah, it's Moogle. Orc, yeah, look, Orc has less vision than Moogle did. He has no idea. He's going to waste time headbutting the front of this base. And if they can join up, it will be beneficial to Kyo. But Kyo right now in the choke point. No! The Mangos, even with reduced damage, the hand cannon is going to get massacred here. They're clustering in the choke point. All the horsemen go down. It looks like Marine Lord is going to back up. Honestly, I think Keo dodged death there. I think those mangoes could have actually easily killed off the hand cannoneers, even with the reduced damage. But instead, he backs up, fully aware that Orc is almost upon him. Those goddamn Orcs always looking to start a war. And still, he never pulled those relics back. Luckily for him, Orc has practically no gold. So he can't actually afford to replace this army if it gets wiped. And Marine Lord's moving for it now. He'll have to split up his forces here to address both. I think he wants to try and get through Orc's army because you see how discounted it is. And he wants to protect these relics because they're on the front line. Bombards getting through the defense line. Nine in the field right now for Orc. They'll try to wrap. The rush through past the defenses is problematic for Kyo. He can't cry for the backstab. There's not enough troops here. And the rush in. The Clash of Swords here. Wraps around the side. And now you're in trouble. Orc, if he loses his army, is he done? He's pretty much dead. He can't afford to replace it. Runs away. Bombards are exposed, though. The torch damage comes in. He's got 39 people working to get more gold. But it's going to be hard to replace all these lost Bombards. He tries to hold at the choke point with a few remaining spears, but they're not going to last long. Not against this many elephants. They are just headbutting against the front line. They'll move through. They'll force the retreat away. And everyone that goes down here is instantly being replaced and prepped to defend against Kyo. You see him just chasing on here. Crossbow damage is at least completely reduced. Problem is, once you get in range, 
the headbutt of this elephant is pretty strong and the horsemen now as well like they're just cleaning it up all the bombards will go down a worthwhile exchange for marine lord because orc he's been struggling for a long time in this game we can see by his gold reserves he can barely afford it he queues up the bombards but look how quickly that munches through his gold reserves don't forget the camel arches also cost gold so a heavy demand for him pressure continues and it looks like marine lord wants to push orc all the way back and then with once all the troops are lost, once that whole army is burned, a new army comes up to defend against Kyo. It's actually a pretty interesting idea. I quite like it because territory matters. Like, the amount of time it's going to take Orc to gap close again is going to matter. Looks like he's finally backing up, though. Gains de decent ground. Needs to address Kyo before he gets any deeper. Trades maybe a little bit too good. Sorry, did I say camel archers cost gold? I was thinking of camel riders. Ignore me. I'm a nincompoop. They are indeed food and wood. It's still a lot of gold demand for him, though. Either way, you look at this. Like, he can't easily afford to keep up with it. Marine Lord still can, though. Even the high price on these elephants, you can see, like, the gold is looking beautiful for him. And now the rush in the horseman! Oh, my God. The hand cannons can't protect it. The siege battalion's gone. Tugs on the trebs. Good luck getting through the cannons. You can't approach either the cannons. They're the only thing that's really been stopping you. The trebuchets were meant to be the solution. The bombard switch up now might seem good in theory, but it can still struggle against these defenses because they have even range. And now the elephants even go in. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We will not be hunted by bombards today. Viva la elephant. Viva la Delhi. Yes, I'm aware the Delhi don't say viva. But they're going to be saying hasta la vista, baby, to Kyo as they boot out of the Delhi base. Those bombards, I, I mean, Kyo, Kyo, just run, run. Cut your losses, sir. I know you haven't got much time, but it's going to be even more problematic if you have to roll bombards all the way from back at base again. An orc. Oh, he discovered it. He discovered it, but he doesn't have the siege in place yet. He knows. He knows about this breach point, but he needs to get in now. And he needs to be fast about it. Bombards on the move. Marine Lord, did he scout that? Did he see him on the high ground there? That's important details. Yes, he knows. He sees him. The outpost gives vision. Marine Lord is going to back up here. Six minutes to go. He might have to just sacrifice the arm to save the body here. Except that he's going to lose the relics to the front of his base to hold at the back because this is going to force the pressure. Hawk has a problem here, though. He needs more siege workshops, and that's why he's moving up. He needs to get them the front line faster because it's very likely that he's going to lose a few here. Marine Lord in position. Never actually built the gate, so can't even cheese his way on the, the edge of this here. Maganel's moving in, but no bombards for Marine Lord. Never had a reason to build them. So one bombard will be out of breach pretty damn quick here. I'll say that. It's taking a while on the side. Maganel's going to scare him away. Oh my god. Is that going to be... That's enough? Orc screwed up. He didn't bring in more... Bombards, or they got sniped out. I haven't seen them. He queued them up before, but I have not seen them since. Like, they must have got lost in shipment. I, I don't, I don't understand where they were. They were on a coffee break or something. That's gonna give another two minutes for free over to Marine Lord, and then you're in rush mode. Like, you can't even wait. You can't even coordinate anymore. They're not just, like before. They were two versus Marine Lord. Now it's versus Marine Lord. The clock. The clock was always ticking, but now it truly does matter. We're under five minutes until an M Lord victory. And the elephant count is up to 27. And the horseman rush as well. Forces stand the ground out of Kyo. He has to cover the escape. The bombards can't afford to lose them. Now the Maganel's coming in. The Maganel's can be big here. Heavy damage in. Did I say heavy damage? Comparatively. Definitely not comparative against elephants. They barely feel it. They shrug it off. It's a mild tickling. You fire a rock at these things and they headbutt it off to the side. The hand cannon is at least more effective. The bombards as well. Starting to mash his way through that back line. Maganel shots coming in. That's going to scare him away. Two Maganels can be good enough. The bombards start to target them out. Marine Lord going to lose the siege battalion. Has to back up. Too many elephants going down. He's going to hang around to try and take a few more siege with him. In the meantime, on the south side, Orc is in. He's made the breach. But can he make his way all the way through? He scouts the area with the first contingent of camel archers. He'll see the walls, but the walls... No! What? Oh my god, Marilo, no! 
Wait, did he? Oh my god. Oh my god. Did he? It. Did. It... He did? Or could just walk in? Oh. He put the walls the wrong way. He put the gate the wrong way. He sees it now. He backs up. Oh, no, no, no. That's a new weakness. And now Orc knows about it. The good news for Reload is it's realized three minutes before the tick down. Folks, for those that do not understand what just happened there, the gate is the wrong way. Looks like it's not going to matter for the moment because there's no infantry in place yet. I think he can't get through either way, right? Like, he can only walk a little bit deeper. He can go on the walls, but that shouldn't matter much. Honestly, could I just highlight this should matter more? It kind of frustrates me. I feel like when if you have the gate the wrong way, people should be able to walk through. I'm saying it now. I was really hoping that was going to matter more, but it really doesn't here. They just need to bombard through. And I think it's done. I, I, I don't see the way. They, they, they've forfeited territory. They can't get in. I'm pretty sure this wouldn't have mattered. I don't think you can walk through it anymore. It's rare that we see people outside of Nomads make this mistake. And the only time it matters in Nomads is when people walk on your walls. So I'm pretty sure you can't just run through the other side. I wish you could actually take control of that gate, though. Shout out to Stronghold for having that mechanic. You didn't guard your gates. You deserve to lose them. This is this is tough. I just don't see a way. I mean, the landmark situation, like, Marino still has all four. They haven't even tried to landmark sniper because they can't. They know where the final one roughly is. It's at the back. Like, logically, when a player plays one of victory like this, he's not going to stick it in here. And they never saw it originally, so they're not even looking. They did at least snipe out one of the moss, so they've been getting rid of his gold trickle, but it's so insignificant now. Marine Lord, he's starting to drain his resources, but with a minute and a half to go, the time it would take you to roll to the back of his base is too long. The only way this would work is if he opens up this wood line and lets you open fire straight away, but I think three bombards won't cut it. You need Orc's assistance, and Orc, oh no. He got chased fully away. He got cleaned up. And with that clean up, it looks like M Lord has done it. Less than a minute to go. The time it goes, the ding ding. And the elephant army is arisen once again. Oh, get me out of here. I'll tell you, this is how people get phobias of elephants. Dumbophobia right here, folks. A never ending slew. Keo waves the white flag. Orc smash usually, but in this situation, I have to settle for getting smashed in real life. Just go get drunk after this one. You don't want to remember how this one went down. As Orc alone can't do it. GG gets called. Cool. Marine Lord plays it perfectly from center to edge and gets the win.